really early in the morning, but I'm here at the track to work on my drift car. Today's goal is to do the cooling system and do an oil change, basic stuff, and put my servant team belt on. You know, early bird gets the worm, so I had to come out here. It's about 7.30. As you see, I got all the parts over there. Got parts galore in the trunk. Got radiators. Went and bought coolant last night and oil. So I've been hungry to get this thing finished. Let's go. Out with the old. y'all so i'm about three hours into this we got the i got the radiator in i got the fan on i need to tighten it though um all the coolant hoses are on i'm just working on this last little one that goes to the expansion tank and then it should be ready to receive coolant and start the bleeding process <laughs> So to make this series of clips and videos that you're gonna see make sense. So basically throughout the past two months, I've been working out the quirks and kinks all up in this E36. I mean, there's been kind of one thing after the other, nothing major, just kind of basic maintenance stuff that you would expect to have to do for a car that's been sitting for over two years and some. And I haven't had so much time and money, to be honest, to fully, fully dive into it. So it's just been little by little. And that's why this has been frustratingly taking quite a while. But um, I try to keep a positive attitude about it and remember that this is a big opportunity. And it's really first world problems. I mean, there's people out here who don't even have cars, let alone a car to beat on and have fun with. So I try to keep it positive and yeah like i said i've just been working on it time and time again there's one of the main things that's wrong with it is a miss a misfire that happens at about 3000 rpm and it causes the car to stutter once it gets to that point and cannot fully unleash the power so for instance if i want to do a burnout or donuts which i have not done yet because of this you can't because of the power restriction I just went to, I'm, I'm at Advanced Auto right now, and I just spent about 80 bucks for some things for the E36. I bought this little thing for putting gas in it because that car is obviously not registered, and I don't want to risk driving it on the road right now because it's right. I'm right by a police station, so I'm doing this smart thing. But anyway. I had to go get some hoses for my overflow tank, the expansion tank, I mean, and this siphon so I could do a power steering fluid flush. All right, so this is the siphon that I bought. And I got my little container on the ground and I'm gonna basically just drain out all this nasty power steering fluid. And I'm gonna try to properly bleed it because I realized when I installed a new pump I did not I didn't do the proper procedures to get it working properly so that's probably why there's so much air in it so yeah I'm trying to All right, so I just installed a brand new map sensor. I'm suspicious. This is my problem on why I have a power cut and a misfire because when I unplug this with the car running, it does not shut off and it's supposed to. 
So that is a very clear sign that my map sensor was not working properly. So this is a brand new one. And now we're gonna see how the car runs. If it will idle normally. And So as you guys see, there's no longer power cuts and it idle. It it can idle better. It idles pretty high still, but at least now the full power is unleashed for sure. I'm sure if I go find some slippery surface, this shit will start sliding. But that's the thing. I got to find a spot. But um, yo, this thing scared me for like 10 minutes after I tried to do one burnout. It just cut off and would not turn back on. And I look behind the car and there's mad gas coming out. I thought I popped a fuel line. I started rethinking my entire life. But all it was, was um, I don't really feel like digging back there again, but one of the fuel lines that goes to the fuel pump uh, popped loose. I guess a couple months ago, we didn't properly seal it all the way and it popped right off. So of course, no fuel, your car is not gonna run. So I just put that back on and it started right back up. Yo, I was so freaking scared. Like, I'm like, man, I was getting ready to park this shit for like months and be like, forget it. So yeah, man, it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm pumped that it runs 100% now, 90%. Yo, I'm at it again. So I ended up getting some parts from FCP Euro. All up in this little box not this thing but so we got an intake boot um pcv hose and all that good stuff because i realized on this car a lot of those components are either missing or completely broken so i could just get this cruise controller shit out the way you hear me go get this crap everything is so tight yeah, I didn't tighten anything back. So anyway, there's a lot of shit in here, Louis. Like, there's supposed to be a skinny hose that goes here. It's completely missing. This one is completely crap. And I have the wrong intake boot. This intake boot is for either a 323 or a 328, which is the M52. I should have just said I have a M52 intake boot when I need an M50. So I will show you once I take it all apart and put it back. All right, so one of the issues I'm having is if you take a look at this, there is only one port right here to take a hose. This is for an M52. This car is a 94 or 95 M50. This brand new one has two, it's still in the package, but if you look, one, two. And I had one hose that was dangling. It should have been obvious to me that that was the reason for me having a misfire. But we still have to really fully see. But I am like 80% sure that's the problem. So if you see here, there's a difference. So we're gonna install this. Ooh, all right. Fast forward about two, not about a week. I ended up putting the map sensor in when I first put it in. It was still misfiring and wouldn't release full power. So I did more research and I figured I had maybe the wrong intake boot. And I was right when I was gonna order a new boot, I saw that I had this weird little extension thing uh, attached to the throttle body. And it basically, um, how do I explain? It changes the size of the intake boot that you need. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I took it off and then lo and behold, this now fits and I'm able to connect 
these PCV hoses the way they're supposed to be connected and it runs a lot better. I was actually able to break the tires loose for the first time. <laughs> I'll show some of those clips. So that is where we stand now. Yeah, so like, comment, share. Hopefully the next video you see of this car will be on some kind of racetrack doing donuts. So yeah.